session uh, we started uh, looking into recovery mechanisms in databases uh, especially uh, we looked into the background of uh, transactions and the, the the idea of a transaction and uh, 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 how recovery uh, uh, should uh, should should maintain consistency in terms of uh, uh, different transactions that is uh, it should not leave a transaction in an anatomic form uh, that is uh, 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 when when the database is consistent either all transactions have been performed completely or uh, they have not been performed and it should not violate any integrity constraints and uh, uh, and uh, it, it should be serializable and so on. Uh, uh, today's uh, session we are going to look at uh, uh, some mechanisms for recovery uh, specifically we are uh, looking into what are uh, called as log based recovery. As the name suggests log based recovery means that uh, recovery mechanisms uh, for the uh, database are, uh, uh, are performed using transaction logs. Uh, that is uh, whenever transactions uh, happen uh, cert, uh, certain elements of uh, the, the transaction are logged into log files and using these log files we can uh, try to recover the database into a consistent state uh, in, in case of uh, any kinds of failures. So let us briefly summarize uh, what, uh, whatever we have learnt about uh, 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 the, the, the transactional requirements of databases before we look into uh, the recovery mechanisms or log based recovery mechanisms. Firstly, uh, why recovery or in, in what uh, situations do we talk about recovery mechanisms? Uh, uh, recovery is uh, uh, pertinent in the face of failures and uh, a, a given database system can be subject to different kinds of failures. There could be system failures, uh, the, the, the power could just go off database, uh, there could be media crashes that is uh, uh, there is a disk crash or uh, 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 something of that sort. There could be communication failures that is uh, network has failed and uh, uh, a transaction which was, uh, which was partially submitted or, uh, uh, or especially if you are having uh, distributed databases a transaction which has uh, started on other machine uh, failed because uh, communication between the two machines failed and so on. And then of course there are uh, transaction failures themselves that is transactions could fail for a variety of reasons. Uh, uh, including the, the above kinds of failures that, that we are talking about. Uh, the transactions could fail because they violated integrity constraints, uh, transactions could fail because they could not, uh, 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 there is no uh, uh, serializable schedule for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for the set of activities from these transactions or they could fail because uh, uh, the, uh, uh, whatever schedule that is being currently performed has led to a deadlock or uh, something of that sort. So uh, in many of these uh, uh, failures uh, we, we need a recovery mechanism. Uh, in, the, in the last case that is transaction failure usually it is it's automatic that is uh, the system is still functional the DBMS, the database everything is still functional. So it is just a matter of resubmitting the appropriate transactions uh, after waiting for a while and, uh, 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 and hoping that it succeeds this time rather than uh, uh, fail. Uh, or if, uh, if the transaction has violated an integrity constraint it, uh, it involves something like raising an exception or uh, intimating the application program saying uh, uh, your transaction is wrong or I can't uh, uh, perform your transaction because uh, for example your, uh, your account does not have enough money to, uh, to, to, to withdraw s uh, so much amount that you have asked or something like that. Okay. So uh, uh, leaving aside the last uh, uh, point here in most of the other cases we need 
the, the, the DBMS or the database uh, has crashed and it has to be booted up, it has to be brought up again. Uh, and once it is brought up again, there is no guarantee that uh, whatever data that is there in the database is consistent and uh, 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 it is, it, uh, and it would be unsafe to just start the database and uh, uh, have it running from from wherever it uh, it left off because uh, uh, any amount of uh, uh, data that that was there in the volatile memory uh, in the RAM would have been lost and uh, 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 and and we don't know how uh, how we can set these uh, things right. So, uh, what are the properties of transactions that uh, we have to? Uh, uh, that 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 you have to uh, assure uh, when we are uh, providing uh, recovery mechanisms. The the, uh, the 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 property of transactions, as you know, is called the acid property of transactions. That is, uh, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability properties. Uh, so so let us briefly summarize uh, what is uh, meant by the acid properties and uh, uh, what do they require. Uh, atomicity uh, means that either all updates. Uh, that are performed by the uh, transaction uh, are performed that is uh, either all updates that are required by the transactions are performed or none of them are performed. Uh, we, we cannot have a transaction have, uh, that has performed half of the updates that, uh, that were meant for it. That is uh, we cannot uh, uh, have a transaction that has uh, debited my account uh, in, in a wire transfer uh, 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 transaction and has not credited the, the, the other account. Uh, and, and the money is lost. So, uh, it, it should be either a all or none uh, kind of operation. Uh, similarly, consistency requirements is that when a transaction uh, has to finish or if a transaction has to successfully complete, it should not violate any integrity constraints uh, of the database. That is given a consistent database, uh, a valid transaction should leave the database in another consistent state. Uh, uh, it need not be the same state, it could be another state, but it should be a consistent state. If it violates any kind of cons uh, integrity constraints on the way, then you have to roll back. Uh, you, you cannot uh, uh, can't complete the transaction uh, and you cannot leave it there uh, as well, because you would uh, then be violating the uh, atomicity requirement of the transaction. Isolation constraint that is the uh, I in the acid uh, property uh, states that whenever there are multiple transactions that are happening uh, on, uh, in a DBMS, the, uh, the net effect of all the uh, transactional uh, uh, updates uh, should be such that or should be equivalent to uh, a schedule in which uh, all updates of one transaction are, are performed before the first update of uh, this, uh, the next transaction is taken up. That is, it, it should be as though the, the transactions have run in some serial order. It need not uh, actually be run in serial order, that is what uh, we saw in the previous session. Uh, it need, uh, it uh, activities can be interleaved as long as this interleaving is safe. That is, we, we saw a notion of what is meant by safe, that is the, uh, the, the, the notion of uh, uh, conflict serializability. That is, we should be able to uh, conflict or view serializability, which we saw. That is, we should be into a serialized schedule without encountering any kinds of conflicts. And the last uh, property is that of durability. That is, once a transaction commits, uh, it cannot be rolled back. Uh, it should be uh, uh, the, the changes that are made uh, after a transaction commits are durable. It is persistent. Uh, and uh, uh, not only that, uh, uh, the changes are made uh, 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 inside the database that is uh, onto disk. Uh, it, it could the, the changes could uh, also entail performing some kind of physical uh, operation. Uh, like we said, uh, uh, like we gave the example yesterday uh, of uh, dispensing money from an ATM. That is, uh, uh, if uh, 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 once a transaction for uh, withdrawing money succeeds and it is uh, and it commits, then uh, uh, the, the ATM uh, dispenses the required amount of money that that was asked for the uh, asked by the customer for withdrawal. Now, once the money is dispensed, you cannot roll back the transaction. The the problem. Uh, if uh, uh, if it is found that there was some error and the money shouldn't have been dispensed, uh, you have to look at solutions that go beyond the database system. You can't ask the database to just roll back this transaction and leave it at that. <coughs> what are the different states in which uh, a transaction lies in? Uh, the the first uh, state is is the active state. That is, uh, when whenever a transaction becomes active. Uh, and it is executing, uh, it is said to be in an active state. Uh, once a transaction has performed all its uh, updates and it is ready to commit, uh, that is it has finished its execution and it is ready to commit, then it is called a partially committed state. 
and uh, uh, once a transaction discovers that it cannot commit, uh, mainly uh, uh, for example it has violated an integrity constraint or uh, uh, its schedule cannot be serialized and so on, uh, then it is said to be in a failed state. And uh, uh, once a transaction has, uh, has rolled back uh, from its failed state that is uh, uh, it has undone whatever uh, it, it had done already, then it is said to be in an aborted state. And if the transaction has uh, uh, committed uh, successfully, then it is in a committed state and either aborted or committed state is called a terminated state. Now, uh, let us look at these states of a transaction uh, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of recovery that is uh, uh, what kinds of states uh, require uh, recovery of the transaction. Okay. Now, uh, if a transaction is terminated that is it is either uh, aborted or committed, uh, then uh, we, we, we would not have lost atomicity as part of uh, as part of the transaction that is uh, uh, if the database crashes uh, after a transaction has committed or, uh, or, or aborted, uh, it should be such that or at least the DBMS should be designed such that uh, these transactions should not be executed again that is it should not we should not submit these transactions again uh, to the uh, 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 to the DBMS. For example, uh, if a, a user has uh, uh, requested for withdrawal of uh, say a thousand rupees from an ATM and uh, the transaction is abort uh, uh, or rather the transaction is committed and uh, the 1000 rupees has been dispensed from the ATM and right after commit uh, the, 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 the system crashes. Uh, then the, the DBMS should be designed such that uh, whether or not this uh, data uh, is there on uh, or uh, is has been updated on the uh, uh, on the DBMS for a, for a variety of reasons which we will see uh, uh, shortly. Uh, whether or not this data is updated on the on the DBMS, this transaction should not be run again. That is, the the the, the user should not be given uh, another set of thousand rupees after the uh, system comes back because the the transaction has already run and the uh, operation has already been performed. Whatever operation has been asked for. On the other hand, uh, if uh, uh, if a failure occurs uh, during let us say active or partially committed state, uh, then uh, we may have to uh, uh, in some cases undo whatever has been uh, done by the transaction, the whatever operations have been done by the transaction and then uh, 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 probably uh, resubmit the transaction that is rerun the transaction uh, once again from the, uh, uh, from the start. So, this slide shows the uh, state diagram or uh, a state transition diagram for uh, uh, the, the different states of uh, a transaction that is uh, we start from the active state and uh, uh, the active state can go to either partially committed state or a failed state depending on whether all operations in the transactions have been executed successfully or whether there have been some problems. And even in a partially committed state there is a chance of failure uh, if the transaction finds out that uh, uh, it cannot commit. For example, if the transaction is, uh, 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 is dependent uh, on, on some other transaction uh, to, to commit uh, in case of uh, uh, and, uh, 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 and the other transaction rolls back and this uh, this transaction is subjected to a cascading rollback. So, so in that case uh, uh, even if all the operations have been uh, 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 there is still a chance of failure of even from the partially committed state. And uh, if uh, nothing goes wrong then you we, we can go ahead and, uh, uh, and go to the committed state or once we reach the failed state the, then uh, the transaction goes into the aborted state that is uh, it rolls back whatever uh, uh, has been done. Uh, so, it undoes whatever operations has been done and uh, it goes back into an aborted state. Let us look at the concept of uh, serializability again uh, 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 where, where we talked about uh, uh, what is meant by serial schedule and uh, uh, how do we know whether a serial schedule is uh, valid or not. Uh, in order to uh, uh, determine whether a serial schedule uh, of uh, transactional activities that are interleaved between one another, uh, in order to know whether this is valid or not, we have uh, introduced the notion of conflict serializability. Uh, as uh, 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 if you remember the conflict serializability is, uh, 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 is a mechanism which defines the notion of conflicting uh, uh, database activities. So, what is uh, what are conflicting activities? Uh, consider two activities i and j belonging to two different transactions t1 and t2. Now, uh, i and j uh, can, uh, uh, can be executed in any order that is uh, i before j or j before i does not matter if uh, i and j uh, refer to different data elements because they, they, they do not affect one another. 
and i and j can still be executed in any order uh, if they refer to the same data element as long as both of them are just read operations. So, so both of them are just reading the uh, given data element. So, it does not really matter uh, whether i reads the data, uh, data element first or j reads the data element first. On the other hand, uh, if either i or j or both uh, contain a write operation on the same data element uh, and both of them of course, refer to the same data element, then they are said to be conflicting. So, uh, we cannot swap the, the execution of i and j and uh, expect that the swapping uh, is an equivalent uh, uh, schedule to the uh, earlier schedule. So, if I have a schedule of uh, 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 operations database update operations, uh, I can verify uh, whether this schedule is safe or not uh, uh, by, uh, uh, by seeing whether it is conflict equivalent. That is, uh, can I keep uh, rearranging the operations uh, of this schedule, so that uh, I, uh, uh, I uh, uh, eventually end up uh, in a serialized schedule. That is, all uh, activities of one transaction are performed before the, uh, the activities of the second transaction. So, so I end up in a serial schedule without encountering any conflicts during the way. Uh, so, uh, so if a schedule S uh, can be transformed in such a way, uh, or uh, if it is conflict equivalent to a serialized schedule, then it is said to be a conflict serializable schedule. We also saw the notion of non-recoverable schedules. That is, uh, uh, in in what cases uh, can we uh, we can never recover uh, from uh, from a crash and so on. Okay, so uh, uh, the the slide here shows such an example of a non-recoverable schedule. There is a transaction T8 which is reading a data element A and uh, writing something back onto A. That is, it has performed some computation. See, as long as uh, I, I, uh, when we are concerned about uh, 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 recovery, we are not really uh, concerned about what kind of operations it makes. As long as there is uh, there is some write operation, we assume that some update has taken place. Uh, maybe there was no update. That is, it has just read the data element and written it back for for whatever reason. But uh, f, uh, at the level uh, uh, of of uh, recovery mechanism. Some change or there is some modification that has happened. Okay. So, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, th this transaction T8 has read a data element A and it has written it back onto, uh, uh, onto the database. Now, after it has written it back onto the database, another transaction T9 read that element of A and uh, of course, did something uh, uh, and then committed. Okay. So, uh, uh, this, this commit operation could probably involve some kind of uh, physical operation like say displaying the data element. Uh, maybe it is the, uh, it is the new stock price or whatever. Uh, it is just dis displayed the data element. However, uh, this transaction T8 uh, tried to do something more and crashed. Okay. Now, uh, uh, because transaction T8 has crashed, it has to be rolled back. That is, whatever operations that are performed by T8 has to be rolled back. But uh, uh, we cannot roll uh, 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 roll it back because transaction T9, which has already read the changed uh, data element, uh, has already committed, and uh, uh, whatever uh, data that is written is already out in the open and uh, it's it's been displayed. So such a schedule is a non-recoverable schedule. And uh, uh, how do we uh, uh, how do we prevent uh, non-recoverable uh, schedules from occurring? Uh, a simple way of preventing non-recoverable schedules uh, 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 is uh, 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 fr from this example uh, uh, is to note that transaction T9 cannot commit until transaction T8 has committed. That is, uh, if a transaction is reading uh, a data element that is uh, written by some other transaction, then it cannot commit uh, until the pre uh, previous transaction has committed. So, in that way a transaction T9 cannot display the value of data element A until and unless transaction T8 has successfully completed. But even then that is even if we stipulate that the transaction T9 cannot commit until transaction T8 has committed cascading rollbacks. That is shown in this slide here that is there are three transactions T, T1 and T2 and uh, uh, this transaction T uh, has read uh, data element A and modified it and written it back into the database. Now, this modified uh, data element is now read by T1 uh, and then uh, T1 in turn modified it again and wrote it back into the database. 
and T2 uh, then uh, 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 read this uh, second modified database, uh, second uh, uh, modified element that is the, 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 the uh, data that was modified by T1. Uh, and then probably dis, uh, uh, try to display it or something. And, and of course, uh, uh, because we have ensured that none of them can commit until T can commit, uh, they are they're just ready and waiting for uh, uh, for performing what uh, whatever their commit operation tells them to do. That is whether you display it or dispense money or whatever. Okay. Now, uh, transaction T instead of uh, committing crashes for whatever reason. Now, because transaction T has crashed, transactions T1 and T2 even though they have completed successfully uh, have no option but to roll back. So this is, uh, uh, th this is the problem of cascading rollback. So, so even if uh, the schedule is recoverable uh, sometimes uh, uh, suppose transaction T is a long running transaction it runs for uh, uh, several uh, minutes or probably sometimes even several hours and transactions T1 and T2 are short uh, transactions and there are several such uh, uh, transactions that are waiting. Uh, on, uh, uh, on on transaction t to uh, uh, for transaction t to commit now for whatever reason if the uh, if the transaction crashes uh, uh, whether it is a, a, a transaction failure or a system failure or media crash or whatever uh, we have to roll back and uh, all these uh, uh, transactions that have been waiting on transaction t So let us look at how to uh, tackle all these problems uh, uh, in a systematic fashion. So uh, the, the concept of recovery. Uh, 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 recovery from uh, transaction failures is the process of restoring the database to the uh, and, and where do we restore it? We restore it to the most consistent state uh, that was there before the failure. And uh, there are two kinds of uh, recovery strategies uh, that uh, we are going to be uh, seeing today. Uh, which are called the deferred update uh, strategies and immediate update strategies. Now, deferred update essentially means that uh, the database uh, uh, or, or updations to the database is deferred until uh, after some time, uh, which will uh, which will uh, uh, formalize later on. Okay, and immediate update techniques uh, update the database uh, as and when transactions are running. The the, the database is physically changed uh, as and when transactions are running. So this slide uh, defines both of these uh, techniques again that is uh, the database is not modified until uh, a transaction reaches its commit point in deferred updates, uh, update techniques. And in immediate update techniques uh, database is updated as and when transaction progresses. Uh, however, uh, if a transaction fails in, 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 in uh, immediate update techniques uh, you, you have to uh, undo these operations that is you have to change this. Therefore, uh, they have to be logged whatever updates the, uh, the, uh, the were made to the database uh, have to be logged before the updates are made. Uh, obviously, you cannot uh, uh, log the updates after making the updates because what happens if, uh, uh, if the system crashes once you have made an update and before writing the log. On the other hand, if you have uh, uh, written a log uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the system crashes before making the update, it is still not so much of a problem as we will see uh, later. Before we uh, go on to recovery techniques, there are two things that uh, uh, we have to define uh, and uh, we have to be careful about how, uh, uh, how this impacts uh, recovery techniques. The first uh, issue is that of cache management. Uh, you might have uh, studied in, uh, uh, in an operating uh, systems course that uh, uh, most operating systems use what is called as buffer caches. And uh, <coughs> what are buffer caches? Buffer caches are uh, some uh, uh, buffered uh, areas in, uh, in memory uh, that act as a cache for uh, uh, data that are present on disk. That is whenever uh, a disk block or, or a disk sector is accessed or uh, is uh, uh, sought by the operating system, instead of reading just one disk block, usually uh, uh, operating systems uh, perform what is called as read ahead. That is uh, it reads a set of blocks uh, into uh, main memory and uh, uh, all writes that are performed onto disk uh, sectors are uh, initially performed just on the main memory and not on uh, onto the disk. And uh, it is only once in a while that uh, this cache uh, or, or this buffer cache is uh, flushed onto disk. Uh, this is done in the, uh, in the interest of performance. Uh, that is why for example, uh, in most operating systems uh, 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 you need to uh, uh, perform some kind of uh, disk sanity checks if the operating system crashed uh, midway. Uh, because uh, um, not all uh, 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 blocks that, that have been modified would have actually been written onto disk. 
Now this buffer cache is uh, 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 is an operating system construct. That is, uh, it is in the control of the operating system. Uh, and uh, uh, application programs or user level programs that run uh, in an operating system usually do not have control over this buffer cache. But for database recovery, we need to have control over this, uh, uh, over this cache because we cannot assume that uh, uh, the operating system has written something onto disk after we have, uh, uh, we have said write because the operating system in turn uh, has its own uh, mechanisms that, that, that may differ uh, uh, writings onto disk and which may impact our recovery process. Therefore, typically uh, uh, in, in many uh, database management systems, uh, what is done is a, uh, a part of the buffer cache uh, that is maintained by the operating system is given to the DBMS. Uh, uh, is given uh, that is the the, uh, the DBMS is given control of this buffer cache so that uh, 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 it can uh, the, the, that is the DBMS can uh, 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 can control into the buffer cache and so on okay? uh, and uh, 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 and uh, such uh, kinds of uh, 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 cache uh, pages which are given to the DBMS are called DBMS caches and of course. Uh, 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 there is al uh, there is also the problem of uh, what happens uh, if the system crashes when the cache is being written onto uh, onto disk. That is, uh, uh, I have uh, written something onto cache, and uh, uh, now I'm flushing this buffer cache. But during this uh, buffer cache flush, the, the system crashed, and and what do we do? Uh, uh, so uh, if uh, the the cache is partially written and the data could be inconsistent and so on. For that, a technique called shadow paging is used, which uh, uh, which we uh, we are going to study in the next session uh, on uh, uh, database recovery techniques. So uh, the the shadow paging technique that is used for database recovery can also be used for uh, maintaining uh, or recovering uh, 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 cache contents uh, in the case of uh, 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 crashes. The second issue that we are going to be concerned about uh, is uh, the uh, concept of log. Uh, now uh, we have uh, 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 we have mentioned in passing that uh, 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 in order to uh, aid the process of uh, recovery from from databases, we maintain logs. That is, uh, whatever updates are made to the database are all logged in in some log file. Now this log file uh, keeps on growing because every update that is made to the database, uh, the information about this update is uh, is kept in this log files. Now this log file keeps on growing, and uh, we don't know when a crash would occur and how much of history information we need, and so on. So uh, uh, how do we prevent uh, this log from growing forever the, uh, uh, and uh, uh, probably becoming uh, bigger than the database itself? So uh, the answer to this is the notion of a checkpoint. A checkpoint in a log. Uh, records a state where uh, all uh, all uh, transactions that have been committed uh, until this point uh, in in time have been physically modified on the disk in the database. That is, the the, the database has been updated and everything is fine uh, uh, for all the committed transactions until a checkpoint. So. Uh, uh, all committed transactions that have been uh, uh, information about uh, whom uh, have been stored in the log uh, until a checkpoint can be thrown away. That is, at a checkpoint, we can throw away data about all the committed transactions that that have happened before the checkpoint. And uh, 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 at, at what frequencies do, do we have to checkpoint the log? That is, uh, checkpointing rather. Uh, that is, uh, the, the the process of introducing a checkpoint in a log. Uh, as you might have imagined, uh, is uh, 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 is a separate process by itself. That is, uh, uh, we have to decide at what intervals at or at what frequencies are we going to introduce checkpoints into the logs, and uh, what should be done when a checkpoint is being introduced. And checkpointing actually uh, involves uh, suspension of all uh, activities of the database, uh, all transaction activities of the database temporarily, uh, until uh, we know for sure that all the uh, uh, that, that this uh, checkpointing criteria is met. That is, all the committed transactions have been successfully updated onto the disk. The algorithm for checkpointing is uh, is quite simple, uh, but quite costly in, in terms of operations. That is, uh, 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 in order to take a checkpoint, we first suspend all transaction activities temporarily, uh, because we don't want. Uh, 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 more data to be written when when, when we are uh, uh, when we are handling this uh, checkpointing, and then we force write that is we flush uh, all main memory buffers that have been modified onto disk. 
that is whatever has been uh, uh, whatever data that was uh, uh, that that had to be updated on the database uh, we force write all of these uh, committed and then we write a checkpoint uh, note in the, uh, um, the uh, in, in the log file uh, and uh, and also of course force write this uh, 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 this this log onto disk that is uh, the the fact that we have written uh, or uh, the, uh, the fact that we have encountered a checkpoint should also be recorded persistently onto disk because uh, uh, once we have thrown away information ab about other transactions uh, 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 we can't lose the, the the fact that we have uh, uh, performed a checkpointing operation and then we resume transaction activities there is also notion of uh, fuzzy checkpoints uh, where uh, th that that uh, that are more uh, slightly more efficient than th the usual checkpointing techniques uh, note that uh, checkpointing requires suspension of all transaction activities and if this is done too frequently then uh, it impacts database performance itself uh, now let us see where is the biggest overhead uh, uh, during a checkpoint and see can we do something about making this checkpointing faster the main overhead uh, in checkpointing uh, uh, and uh, I am sure you would have imagined that uh, is uh, is the flushing of all the buffer cache onto disk that is each buffer cache uh, contains uh, a set of disk blocks and uh, 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 so, so all of these disk blocks have to be physically uh, flushed onto disk and this is what is going to take the most uh, uh, time. Now in fuzzy checkpointing what happens is that transaction activities resume uh, after writing the checkpoint entry in the log even though uh, flushing has not been completed that is uh, even the, the checkpointing uh, 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 checkpoint entry could be in the cache and all the uh, flushing activ activities are still going on uh, but transaction activities uh, 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 the, 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 the transaction activities uh, resume uh, however the previous checkpoint is not released that is uh, the, the older uh, log entries are not deleted until uh, uh, after the new checkpoint entry has been flushed onto disk. So, so it is a background operation where uh, uh, until we are sure that uh, the, the new checkpoint operations have, uh, operation has been written onto disk that is this can be written onto disk only after all the buffer cache uh, uh, buffers have been flushed onto disk. So until we are sure that this has been done the, uh, the, the previous uh, uh, set of uh, 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 log entries are not deleted. So let us look at the first kind of uh, recovery technique uh, which we called as the deferred updates recovery. So uh, what is the um, uh, notion of a deferred update recovery? As the name suggests uh, deferred updates means that the updates uh, to the database are deferred uh, until a transaction commits that is uh, until a transaction uh, is uh, 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 has reached a ready to commit state. The, the overall strategy for a deferred updates recovery uh, is simply this thing that is a transaction cannot change the database. So even if a transaction has run uh, half or 90 percent or uh, 95 percent or whatever it has not made any changes onto the uh, database uh, as far as uh, 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 until it has committed. So until it reaches the commit point uh, uh, a database uh, uh, the, the database is not updated and a transaction does not reach its commit point until all its update operation are, uh, operations are, uh, are logged and the log is force written onto disk. That is the, the, the transaction does not say I am ready to commit uh, until uh, uh, all its uh, operations that, that have been done uh, have been logged and this log is available on, on, the, on the disk. Uh, uh, therefore uh, even if the transaction crashes now uh, and even if the database is not updated we have the log entries which says that uh, uh, these were the changes that were made and uh, the, the transaction is now ready to commit and, uh, uh, and it can commit. So using this uh, let us see how we can perform recovery. Now we will first look at the recovery in a single user environment that is uh, it is a sequential uh, uh, database engine where transaction uh, uh, transaction is performed one after the other. Uh, this is a simplistic case but uh, uh, it helps us in understanding how the deferred update techniques, uh, technique works. So uh, deferred update technique uh, uses two lists of transactions that, uh, that is one is the list of all committed transactions. Uh, the, uh, when, when does it use this two list of transactions that is after uh, uh, it is uh, after the disk uh, that is after the system has been brought up following a crash and uh, the, the, the system is asked to recover to a, uh, to a consistent state. Now once uh, the system is asked to recover to a consistent state the recovery process starts by using uh, two lists of transactions 
uh, one is the list of all committed transactions uh, till the uh, since the last uh, checkpoint and the list of all active so, uh, since it is a single user operation there would be at most one such transaction which would have failed in a uh, active state and uh, uh, and uh, logs that uh, that are maintained uh, for these transactions uh, are maintained in the following form uh, which is shown here that is uh, the first element here says that uh, uh, this is a write item that is uh, uh, something has been written onto disk note that uh, as far as recovery is concerned we are interested only in this write items logs can be used for a variety of purposes something like uh, to to uh, to to understand the behavior of transactions to to profile the performance of a database and so on uh, and uh, and so forth but as far as recovery is concerned we are just interested in uh, what changes have been made to the database therefore we are interested in uh, in uh, in only these write items so uh, it says this is a write item belonging to transaction t involving data element x and this is the new value that was written on to uh, x uh, or uh, th that has to be written onto the database uh, for element x. Now uh, once these two uh, lists are maintained that is uh, the, the list of all uh, uh, committed transactions since the previous checkpoint and uh, the, the list of all active transactions we first start by redoing all the committed transactions that is uh, uh, we, we take the set of all committed transactions since the uh, previous checkpoint and then uh, go about looking at the logs and see what values uh, the, uh, 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 they, they had written onto what data elements and we start writing those values once again. We do not care what is the semantics of these values or uh, uh, whether these values were read and, uh, 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 or anything because these transactions were already committed. The, the cache has been dispensed already so so we don't have to do any physical operation we don't have to uh, we don't have to even tell the application program uh, that we are doing these things because these are already committed and we know what are the values that has to go into the database we just write those values uh, we we just start from uh, the, the the previous checkpoint and just start uh, 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 data element x has to have a value of 10 data element y has to, has to have a value of uh, uh, abc or whatever and we just start writing those uh, values back into the And uh, then uh, uh, for all the active transactions which uh, crashed midway uh, uh, during execution uh, we just have to restart all those active transactions uh, because that because none of the active transactions have physically modified the database that is what is the deferred update technique all about that is uh, transactions do not uh, 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 do not modify the database until they are ready to commit and they, they would not be ready to commit until they have made all the log entries onto disk. Now uh, after they have made all the log entries onto disk and said that they have been committed then they would be treated as a committed transaction and the first of the, all the redo operations from the transaction is uh, performed. Uh, if for any case uh, the transaction uh, th that is the ready to commit tag uh, uh, does not go into the log or, uh, uh, or, uh, or whatever has been uh, uh, written by the transaction uh, is not flushed onto the log and, and the system crashes then it is treated as an active transaction and it is just started uh, once more and uh, 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 it runs once again and uh, makes changes onto the logs and if, if everything goes well that is if the log is flushed onto this then it is ready to commit and the, uh, 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 and the database is updated. What about uh, 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 updates if the database is actually a multi user environment and there are several concurrent transactions that are running at the same time. Uh, in a single user environment we do not have to worry about uh, concurrency control uh, that is uh, 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 how transactions are uh, serialized that is they, 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 they uh, run in a serialized fashion by default. But in a, a multi user environment uh, there is the, uh, the, uh, there is the uh, problem of serialization of transactions. Now serialization of transactions is not the problem of the recovery part of the database it is usually handled by the concurrency manager that is uh, 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 whatever uh, concurrency control techniques are used for uh, uh, managing uh, concurrency. Now we assume that uh, for deferred update techniques we require that uh, concurrency control uses what is called as a strict two phase locking. 
Uh, you might have heard of uh, the, the notion of locking in several contexts in, uh, in operating systems in, uh, uh, and uh, uh, pr probably in, uh, 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 even in systems design and so on, where locking uh, es essentially means that uh, if a transaction is uh, performing some, some updates on a database uh, or, or some data elements, uh, it obtains a lock. Uh, that is, uh, uh, it, it locks the data element so that nobody else uh, can uh, 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 can uh, uh, read or write uh, to the uh, data element or uh, can access the data element. Now, of course, there are two kinds of locks that is read locks and write locks. So, um, uh, read locks can be shared, but uh, uh, write locks or exclusive locks cannot be shared. That is, uh, once a transaction has obtained a lock on a data element that it is going to modify, no other transaction can even read the data element until the lock is released by the transaction. Okay? So, in strict uh, two phase locking, uh, the, uh, all the locks that are held by a database or, or, or by a transaction are not released until the transaction reaches its commit point. Now, what does it mean that uh, re reaches its commit point? That is, all the updates it has made uh, are, are logged, uh, 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 that is, are written onto logs, and the log is flushed onto disk. Okay? Now, uh, now, the transaction is uh, sure that somewhere uh, whatever, uh, whatever updates it has made is persistently stored. Uh, that is, it's, uh, the, the updates that it has made is safe somewhere. It is not just lost once uh, uh, if, uh, if the system crashes. And only then uh, will it release its locks. So, only after it's, uh, it releases its locks uh, can other transactions read the data element, uh, read the corresponding data element. <coughs> So, uh, 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 assuming that we have st uh, strict uh, two PL, that is uh, strict uh, two phase locking, the recovery process can uh, uh, can follow the uh, 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 can follow the technique shown here. Uh, firstly, make two lists of transaction. That is, once uh, 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 after a database has crashed and uh, uh, it has uh, restarted and the recovery algorithm is uh, is begun and uh, uh, it is starting to recur, uh, make two lists of uh, uh, transactions. That is, uh, first is the set of all transactions that have be, that have committed since the uh, previous checkpoint, and the and the list of all active transactions. Now, for all the set of transactions that were committed, uh, we have to redo the operations. Uh, th this is the same thing that we have done in the single user environment. Uh, however, here we have to ensure uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, we, we have to explicitly state that the redo of the operations are performed in the same order as they appear in the log. We cannot, uh, uh, we cannot try to optimize this redo operations by uh, introducing some concurrency there, because uh, uh, they may violate uh, 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 some kind of uh, 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 serializability conditions if they are performed in, uh, uh, in some other order. Uh, 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 between two or more updates uh, such that they cannot be swapped in their ordering. And uh, once the read and uh, redo operations are performed, that is once all the committed transactions have been uh, uh, persistently written onto disk, uh, we then uh, restart all the active transactions uh, but and before that we release all the locks that have been held by these active transactions and, uh, and again the, the, the ground is free, so that uh, uh, whoever wants the locks can, can now hold those locks. So, so, we release all those locks and uh, resubmit all the active transactions once again. Let us take an example of uh, uh, different transactions and see what happens in a multi-user environment. So, this slide shows uh, a set of transactions and, uh, 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 and uh, two different events. One is a checkpointing event that, that happens here and one is a system crash that happens here. Now, there are several transactions in the database now here. Okay, transaction T1 has already committed before uh, the, the checkpointing uh, even happened. Therefore, after the checkpointing, uh, data, about three one, uh, data about T1 are thrown out. Uh, we do not even need uh, data about T1 anymore. However, uh, T3 and T4 have started before the checkpointing operation, but they have not completed. Therefore, we cannot throw out this. Uh, we cannot throw away this data about uh, T3 and T4, uh, even if uh, checkpointing is performed. Uh, and transaction T2 has started only after the previous checkpoint, but has committed its operations before the system crash. While uh, T4 and T5 uh, have not yet committed, T4 is a really long transaction uh, th that is uh, 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 th that that is taking place, and they have uh, not uh, committed uh, when the system has crashed. So, so what happens? 
Uh, what happens in the uh, uh, update operation here? That is uh, during the deferred update operation. Uh, T1 uh, is not is not concerned at all. It doesn't figure into the picture at all because there's there's no data about T1. So uh, 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 at at the time of the updates that that is happening here, committed. But the data is still there because it is uh, it's occurring after the checkpoint. And because it has committed, transaction T2 will undergo a redo operation. That is, uh, all its uh, uh, updates are logged into log file, and the, uh, uh, using the log file, the, the, the database is updated. Transaction T3 has also committed before the uh, uh, system crash. It has started before the checkpoint, therefore, uh, its data will not be thrown away. And because it has committed uh, before the system crash, this is also redone. That is, uh, um, uh, a redo operation will be performed on transaction T3. And transaction T4 uh, is still active at the time of uh, 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 system crash, as is transaction T5. So therefore, both T4 and T5 have to be uh, resubmitted uh, to the DBMS. Uh, that is, after releasing all their uh, locks that, that they have held, they have to be resubmitted back to the DBMS. So, so that is what this, uh, this slide says. That is, data about T1 can be safely removed after checkpoint. It does not even figure uh, during uh, syst uh, uh, system crash. That is, it does not even figure during updates, uh, uh, recovery rather. Uh, and uh, trans uh, data about T3 and T4 should not be deleted at uh, checkpoint because they have not committed. And uh, transaction T1 is unaffected uh, uh, during the recovery process. T2 and T3 are subjected to redo operation and T4 and T5 were uh, aborted and resubmitted back into the DBMS. There are some efficiency issues about uh, redo operations. Uh, if we, uh, a small thing that we can notice, if a data element X has been uh, written, uh, 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 it is uh, enough if we just write the last uh, update onto the database because anyway uh, uh, if we write a previous update it is going to be overwritten by the next updates. Okay. So, hence for redo operations we can start from the end of the log and start uh, making updates moving backwards in the log and we should not write a data element uh, onto the database if it has already been written once on uh, during redo because we have already written the latest value uh, during redo. What are some of the properties of uh, deferred updates? Uh, there is no undo that is required. Uh, uh, if you have noticed, we have only talked about redo. There is no undo operations that, that are required. Uh, why? Because the database is not modified at all. It is only the transaction uh, logs that are modified. And uh, since all logs are rele uh, released uh, in, in uh, strict uh, 2 PL, uh, all logs are released only after commit. Uh, a transaction can read a data element that is being modified. Uh, 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 that is, no transaction can read a data element that is being modified by another transaction. Therefore, there is no possibility of cascading rollbacks, uh, 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 because uh, 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 one uh, transaction uh, has already read uh, uh, a, a data element that has been modified by some, uh, some other transaction and waiting for it, uh, waiting for it to commit. So, there is no such possibility. So, th there is no possibility of cascading rollbacks. However, potentially there is a large amount of disk operations during commit, because uh, enormous amounts of uh, uh, updates uh, in especially large transactions that have been written onto logs have to be written back onto the disk. The next technique that we are going to look at is what is called as the immediate update techniques. In immediate update techniques, uh, the database is updated as and when transactions execute. However, uh, for, uh, uh, for the sake of recovery, database updates are performed after the updates are recorded in the log and uh, the, the log is written onto disk. That is, uh, only after we know that is there is still some kind of uh, 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 some kind of deferred updates happening here. That is, uh, updates are deferred uh, only after we know that the log is uh, uh, written onto disk uh, and uh, b before which we, we modify the database. Uh, as in when we know that a particular uh, 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 log entry has been written, on, written onto disk, all those corresponding entries can be modified. And uh, 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 however, in the uh, in the face of a crash, uh, we have to undo all unfinished transactions since the last checkpoint. Uh, we, we need an undo operation here, which was not required in the deferred updates. And we still need the redo operations for uh, uh, redoing all the uh, activities of the committed transactions uh, since the last checkpoint. So, uh, let us first uh, 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 look at the undo operations, that is uh, what should be uh, done for all the unfinished uh, transactions. Now, uh, in order to perform undo, 
uh, we need uh, an extra uh, element in the transaction logs. Uh, th th this is shown uh, here that is a transaction log contains this write element, uh, uh, write item element uh, and uh, transaction t th that is this element belongs to transaction t involving data element x and it says that the old value of x was this and the new value was this. Therefore, when we are undoing it we have to replace uh, x by its old value. Uh, uh, rather, uh, uh, and uh, because we didn't have an undo, we didn't have we didn't have to store the old value in deferred updates. And of course, undo operations have to be performed in the reverse order, obviously, because the oldest value has to uh, remain on the database. And uh, uh, these uh, log entries, uh, uh, the, the way these log entries are created, uh, 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 is such that uh, undo and redo operations are what are called as idempotent operations. What is an idempotent operation? Uh, idempotent operation is something which uh, uh, where it does not matter how many times you, you perform the operation. Uh, for example, if there is some problem during undo and undo could not finish, we can just restart this undo process from, from the beginning once again uh, and then run it again and it does not matter because it is just rewriting the old value, it is not performing any computation. It is not saying that uh, value of x was changed by 5 percent, so reduce it by 5 percent or something like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, it is it, it, not, uh, uh, not performing any computation, it is just rewriting back onto disk. So, how do we perform uh, recovery uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in single user environments using, uh, uh, using immediate updates? Again, like uh, deferred updates, we use two lists of transactions, list of all committed transactions since the last checkpoint and list of all active transactions since the last checkpoint. And uh, we first start by undoing the, the, uh, uh, the, the activities of the uh, set of all active transactions using the undo policy that we just saw uh, in the previous slide. Uh, and then we perform the redo operations of all the uh, 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 transactions that have been committed uh, since the last checkpoint. And then we, uh, we, we submit all the active transactions back to the TBMS, so that they can execute once again. And uh, how do we perform recovery in, uh, in uh, multi-user environments? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, using immediate update techniques. It's the same. Uh, it's it's quite similar to that of the deferred update techniques, uh, where we use a strict uh, two-phase locking, so that none of the locks are released uh, until the transaction is committed. Uh, therefore, there is no possibility of a cascading rollback. Uh, and uh, 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 and as before, uh, use two lists of transactions. Uh, that is the this, uh, list of all committed uh, transactions and the list of all active transactions since the last checkpoint. Then uh, undo the rights of all active transactions using the uh, undo policy and uh, redo the uh, 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 right operations of all the committed transactions using the redo policy. And then uh, just uh, uh, release all the logs that have been held by the active transactions and uh, 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 give the transactions back to the DBMS that is resubmit the transactions. So, what are the properties of uh, uh, immediate update recovery? Uh, uh, as you can see, database updates can happen as and when uh, logs are written onto disk. Uh, uh, that is, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, operating uh, rather the DBMS uh, should only keep track of uh, when the buffer cache logs are written onto disk. So, as and when buffer cache logs are written onto uh, onto disk, the appropriate uh, 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 database updates can also uh, start happening. Uh, so, uh, uh, because of this uh, uh, database updates, the, the load on database updates is uniformly distributed. They are not they are not bursty uh, as in uh, uh, deferred update transaction, uh, deferred update techniques where uh, 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 all updates happen uh, uh, at the commit point. And uh, 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 but note that uh, uh, the the f any physical activities that is being performed by the application program, like say dispensing money or uh, uh, or launching a missile or whatever. Uh, so, any physical activity that is to be performed by the uh, upper application program uh, can be uh, performed only after the database is updated. That is uh, only after we know that and uh, <coughs> the database is updated. Why? This is because even if the transaction is committed, that commit uh, the, 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 uh, the fact that it has been committed might still be in the buffer cache, it may not be written onto disk and the system could crash. And once the system uh, uh, comes back again, uh, it is treated as uh, an uncommitted transaction and it is run once 
even if in memory uh, it uh, 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 the, the DBMS knows that it has been committed, uh, it cannot or uh, it should not tell the application program saying everything is okay. Everything is still not okay. Uh, 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 it will be okay when only when the 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 disk is updated. That is uh, 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 once they are uh, flushed onto disk. Uh, so it's it's uh, uh, commits can be performed only after uh, either the database or the logs are updated. That is force writing logs onto disk whenever a commit happens. So uh, that uh, uh, brings us uh, to, to the end of uh, uh, this session on uh, 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 transaction recovery using log based recovery techniques. Uh, here we saw uh, uh, several different uh, uh, issues. Uh, we, we started with several different issues uh, concerning recovery in database systems. We looked at the different kinds of failures that can happen and uh, uh, what it means uh, to, to recover from a, uh, 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 from a system crash or, uh, or some kind of a failure. Uh, and there are two issues that affect recovery processes. One is cache management that is uh, uh, for the sake of efficiency uh, disk blocks are usually cached into RAM uh, in the buffer cache. Uh, and because we are talking about recovery, uh, this can impact recovery process because we are not really sure uh, whether something that has been written onto disk has actually been written onto disk. Uh, so, uh, so some part of the buffer cache is usually controlled uh, by the DBMS and which is called the DBMS cache. And then we looked at the uh, concept of checkpointing which allows us to throw away, uh, safely throw away uh, 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 historical information that is stored uh, in logs. And then we looked at two kinds of uh, uh, log based recovery techniques, uh, uh, deferred updates and, and immediate updates, uh, we, both of which use uh, uh, what are called as idempotent uh, uh, undo and redo operations. Uh, there is no undo operation in, uh, in deferred updates, but uh, 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 there are uh, undo and redo operations in uh, immediate updates. And, uh, and then we also categorized this log based recovery into two different kinds, uh, single user environments and multi user environments. And uh, in multi user environments we have a requirement that uh, uh, we have to use strict two phase locking in order to uh, prevent cascading rollbacks uh, uh, in case of a, uh, a crash recovery. So uh, uh, that brings us to the end of this session.